Are you thinking about maybe taking a cruise to Alaska today? I've got the planning tips and best itineraries that you should know about up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. There is nothing like an Alaska cruise. I heard that for years. People told me that all the time. I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then I finally tried it for myself. And you know what? They were right. Alaska cruises are just amazing. But a lot of people wonder, why would you want to go somewhere cold for your vacation? Why would anybody cruise to chilly, rainy Alaska where you might be wearing fleece jackets, knit hats, and gloves in July? Well, looking beyond the iffy weather, you'll find many reasons to cruise to Alaska. Perhaps you're drawn to the gorgeous scenery, the area's cultural and historic riches, or its abundant wildlife. With a variety of itineraries, cruise ships, destinations, and activities to consider, no cruise to Alaska is ever the same. However, a lot of people that are new to cruising to Alaska can easily become overwhelmed choosing the best Alaska cruise itinerary or picking the perfect cruise line or even cruise tour. In this guide, I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to know to choose and plan the Alaska cruise vacation of your dreams, or at least get you started. One of the two. Number one, why cruise to Alaska in the first place? You know what? There's a lot of people who just simply say, Matt, I don't know why I'd want to go there. Well, Alaska is home to a beautiful mountainous landscape and an abundance of wildlife from bald eagles to bears and moose. It possesses a unique gold rush history and a vibrant mix of native Alaskan cultures. You won't find this blend of scenery, outdoor pursuits, history, and culture in any other cruise itinerary. Plus, many of the inside passage ports are tricky to visit by land. For example, Ketchikan is only accessible by air or sea, and you can't visit the glaciers of Glacier Bay by car. So if you want to explore this region of Alaska, you're going to need to go on a cruise ship. Unlike other cruise destinations, Alaska ports aren't separated by vast swaths of ocean. When you cruise the inside passage, the ship is constantly within sight of land. Most sea days offer something to see, even if it's not an official scenic cruising day. It's a different kind of cruise experience and one many travelers are eager to pursue. So what's the best itinerary for you? Well, no matter which line you choose to go to Alaska, they follow very similar cruise itineraries. Alaska Inside Passage Cruises sail round trip from either Seattle or Vancouver, perhaps with a stop in Victoria, British Columbia, and get to explore Southeast Alaska. One-way cruises travel between Vancouver and Whittier or Seward in Alaska. These cruises typically visit several Inside Passage ports, but swap Victoria for a more northern Alaska stop, such as Sitka. They take cruisers through the Gulf of Alaska to South Central Alaska, close to Anchorage. The best Alaska itinerary really depends on what you want to prioritize for your vacation. The benefit of a round trip cruise is, well, it's easier and cheaper to airlift to the departure ports. You won't have to bother with one-way flights and the longer transit time to or from Anchorage. On the other side, a one-way sailing is best for somebody who wants to tack on extra vacation time on land to visit things like Denali National Park or Kenai Peninsula. To assist with the latter, most cruise lines offer cruise tours, which combine three to seven night bus tours through Alaska with a week long cruise. These options are ideal for anybody who wants the entire itinerary planned out for them rather than booking their own lodging, transportation, and activities pre or post cruise. So which line should you pick to go to Alaska? Well, you're on Royal Caribbean blog on YouTube. What do you think I'm gonna recommend? <laughs> but I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about there are some differences between the lines. Like Holland America and Princess are really known for offering cruise itineraries to Alaska and they have a lot of different options that are available for you. But the nice thing about Royal Caribbean is it really does suit family needs and budget better. And you're still going to have a wonderful cruise in Alaska. You might find that Royal Caribbean offers more competitive pricing on Alaska cruises and still offer preferred onboard activities or more robust kids programming, making them the best Alaska cruise choice for you. All right. So now you're saying, Matt, you sold me. I want to do an Alaska cruise. When should I go? The Alaska cruise season is short. So running mainly between the months of May and September with a few lines that maybe can go as far as like maybe April and October as well. But really the best time to cruise varies depends on what, yes, what you prioritize. It always depends. That's the answer to every single question on here. The best Alaska cruise weather is typically found in the month of June when the summer rains haven't ramped up yet, but the air temperatures are rising. This is the time when the sun barely sets and it's light nearly all day long. July and August are the rainiest months in Alaska and see the most mosquitoes. September is starting to get chilly with rougher waters and shorter days. May is the best month if you want to see waterfalls and wildflowers. June is when the salmon run starts and the different species will appear and disappear throughout the cruise season. Denali Lodges and the Park Road open in June, so your best bet for visiting the National Park is probably in July and August for full accessibility and wildlife activity. However, if you want to see baby animals, aww, plan your visit for May or June. The best prices are, of course, found during the months of in the shoulder seasons, April, May, and September, October. The biggest crowds and highest cruise fares come around mid-June through mid-August. 
So if you want to get the best shot at viewing the Northern Lights, you should probably book an itinerary at the very end of the season and then tack on a cruise tour up to Denali and Fairbanks for the greatest potential. Keeping in mind that if you really want to see the Aurora Borealis, you're probably going to have to come back in winter when there's no cruise ships here and it'll be cold, but you'll be able to see it. During your Alaska cruise, you're going to visit a mix of ports that offer a variety of history, culture, scenery, and outdoor activities. If the best Alaska cruise ports are the most popular ones, then the top options are the main inside passage ports of Juneau, Skagway, and Ketchikan. Cruise ship sailing one-way voyages often visit Sitka, which is a former Russian outpost in North America and home to many native Alaskans. Some ships visit Haines instead of Skagway. Icy Strait Point is a native-owned and operated port set on a former fish cannery, which can be expanding and growing in popularity. Less common are the ports of Petersburg and Wrangell, located between Ketchikan and Juneau. You may find some of the smaller ports on select itineraries. Now let's talk about what you're going to do on an Alaska cruise. When it comes to planning shore excursions for time in port, you'll find many things to see and do on your Alaska cruise. And in fact, there's going to be more than you have time for. Flight seeing is a very popular activity where you can go by a float plane that will soar you over beautiful natural areas or a helicopter that will fly you to the top of a glacier. Dog slide rides or, or visiting a dog slide training center and playing with the Huskies are quintessential Alaska activities. To get more of a glimpse of Alaska culture and lifestyle, you should get tickets to a lumberjack show, attend a salmon bake, or even go on a crab fishing tour. If you're a history buff out there, you're going to want to explore the state's gold rush history, either with a local tour of Skagway or a ride on the White Pass and Yukon Railroad. Culturally curious cruisers can visit a totem park or see performances by native Alaskans. Animal lovers, boy, this is a great place for you because you can sign up for a whale watch visit a bald eagle preserve, or take a tour to observe bears in their natural habitat or at a sanctuary. Active travelers can work up a sweat hiking, kayaking, biking, zip lining, or even snorkeling in Alaska's wilderness. Gentle rafting and flow trips are a less intense way to get outside and bond with nature in this great destination. But if you don't want to book a tour, Alaska's cruise ports provide plenty of shopping opportunities for souvenirs and locally made crafts. You can grab an Alaskan beer at a historic saloon or try local seafood at any number of portside restaurants. Now, we haven't talked about the piece de resistance when it comes to Alaska, and that is the glaciers, because they are a must-see. Every cruise itinerary features at least one day of scenic cruising. Glacier Bay National Park is the top pick for glacier viewing because of its multiple glaciers and generally passable channel. However, so many cruise lines wish to visit that national park that there are a very limited number of day spots each year provided to cruise lines, and Holland America and Princess pretty much take them all up. Other scenic cruising sites along the Inside Passage include Tracy Arm, with its Sawyer Glacier and Endicott Arm with Dawes Glacier. One-way Alaska cruises that travel to or from Seward and Whittier may also visit Hubbard Glacier. Typically, the big ships will open up all the outer decks for passengers to crowd the railings to watch the glaciers and scan for wildlife. If you want to get out on a kayak or a small boat to get closer to the glacier or marine life, you'll need to book an expedition cruise for that. If all this sounds amazing, well, then you're probably wondering when should you book your Alaska cruise? And honestly, just like every other cruise out there, I always recommend booking your cruise early. In fact, if you can book it nine to 12 months in advance, you can get some of the best prices out there and the best picks of cabins. You can probably wait until January or February when cruise lines put out the wave season sales and promotions to see if you can get a deal on Alaska sailings. But in my advice, try to book it as early as you can. Once it gets to be about March or April, your booking is considered last minute for an Alaska cruise. You might find a low fare, especially on shoulder season cruises, but you might also find that the room types you prefer are sold out or the fares have gone up on a nearly full ship. And lastly, what should you pack for an Alaska cruise? I think this is obviously the most confusing part of Alaska because packing for it is much different than packing for a Caribbean cruise. Your packing list is going to look very different than most other cruise itineraries out there. But here are some essentials for an Alaska cruise. Number one, rain jacket and other rain gear like boots, pants, umbrella. Warm layers, hats, and gloves for chilly days and glacier viewing. Binoculars for wildlife spotting. A bug spray for, yeah, mosquitoes. Hiking boots if you want to get out there into nature swimsuit and sunscreen because it actually does get sunny outside and get kind of warm, especially in the summer months. Camera and wide angle lens and telephoto lenses. Day pack for carrying extra layers and souvenirs and whatnot while you're in land. And the waterproof bags for kayaking or rafting trips. Now that's the nutshell basics. You must know stuff about Alaska. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever gotten to Alaska before or if you're interested in trying Alaska because there's so much to see and explore here that you just can't do it once. You've got to go back a couple different times. It is definitely worth it. If you like this video and found it helpful, hit that like button below our video. It really does help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That's a little bell icon next to the subscribe button that lets YouTube know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.